Good morning, afternoon, and evening to our audience from all around the world. Thank you for tuning in. I'd like to kick off our fourth session of the Sharjah RTI Park Industry Lab focusing on transport and logistics. A brief intro to our guest speakers, Hussein Wahbi, CEO of Fetcher, Ahmed Hafiz, MENA Regional Director at VIA, Wood Habu, Director of Smart Mobility at Kareem. I'm personally looking forward to gain insights from the region's most exciting ventures within the transport and logistics sectors from various perspectives. I'll start off the session by introducing the Sharjah RTI Park with a quick, I'll try to be as quick as possible, followed by Hussein, Ahmed, and Mahmoud. So I hope everyone sees the screen um, that I'm sharing. Can I get a heads up from everyone? Yeah. Right, yeah. Cool. So I'll just turn off my... So the Sharjah RTI Park is one of the region, region's first organically grown science parks uh, that's uh, grown from a university right to the American University of Georgia in uh, the UAE. And our role is to pretty much stimulate the, uh, the uh, collaboration between academic institutions, government, and the private sector. So the Sharjah RTI uh, will be home to over 200 companies from across various sectors. Um, that is our beautiful headquarters, which we will be moving into very soon, uh, which would be tying everything in together. A little bit about Sharjah. Sharjah primarily focused on uh, education and culture, and that's why it's the ideal situation to really build an innovation ecosystem such as the uh, Sharjah RTI Park. We have a few mandates, um, obviously building an innovation ecosystem. This is both by stimulating venture creations locally and by attracting uh, ventures that are like-minded across various sectors that we support in terms of scaling across the Middle East and North Africa region and naturally generating employment and catalyzing towards a knowledge economy, supporting the UAE uh, strategy to, to diversify the uh, economy and obviously invest for the future. For the past four years, we have been building relations with international ecosystems, various science parks, research institutes, different innovation uh, zones, and academic institutes, all purely to, 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 to support our ecosystem locally. Uh, we support all our companies to, to not only on the local scale, but also on a regional and international scale by building these type of innovation tunnels. We focus on six sectors in addition to healthcare and biotech, um, everything that falls under the circular economy, food security, uh, smart mobility and industrial uh, 4.0 to really foster innovation within these uh, industries. I will go through a few of our snapshots. Of, currently we have about over 50 companies in the park um, and this we've achieved over the past year and a half. Uh, and we're very proud of every one of these partners that joined. Merlin Sustainable Technologies, they are in uh, renewable and agri-tech. We've got uh, <coughs> Spanish Virtue, uh, Virtue, uh, Virtue E, which is a emotional artificial intelligence uh, dealing for uh, PTSD, uh, autism, and, and, and the likes. Nocta Health is a UK and local-based um, pioneer in the women's health biotech. ITD they will have a full-blown um, R&D uh, facility for a VR and AR experiential center, and this will be located at the RTI Park. Civil Twin is another Spanish company, and they have a R&D facility on photovoltaics, which they have started to install at the park. Kefu, for the, local, for the uh, regional uh, attendees and, and the panelists, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Kefu. So, they're going to be exploring the, the intersection of mobility and energy and everything that falls under that category with us. To get there, also started their pilots last year and they're coming back for a second round of the uh, autonomous electric vehicles also being tested at the park. So uh, we are a big advocate as a test bed for, for anything disruptive, which needs, let's say, the support uh, to access potential stakeholders from academics and such. And this is what we support with. Nokia will be rolling out their 5G uh, systems for um, our partners also to be able to build their applications uh, on top of this type of network. 
Mansa Labs is one of the champions also at the park. They, um, they have a full-blown metal 3D printing facility. And recently, they all, so it's not only in addition to metal, it's, it's polymers and plastic. And recently they did the exercise with the uh, health authorities printing the uh, face masks during the COVID pandemic. Uh, Meat is also another additive manufacturing uh, company focusing on construction and cement tech. And they've printed a full blown prototype outside, right outside our temporary co-working spaces now. Skyway was one of the first anchor projects uh, and at the park, we, we, we were, from a transport and logistics perspective, we're supporting companies from all the way from micro mobility to mass transport. This is uh, a game changer really. And what they're doing currently on the park is they're testing the first phase is already up and running. The second phase is being completed by the end of this year. And this is really gonna kind of shift the, the whole mass transport situation. United Nations are setting up their technology innovation lab also. Uh, this is a personal investment for the park. They've done, uh, we've done this to build the capacity and to build thought leaderships around uh, a fast prototyping lab or makerspace. Uh, think of a gym membership for people who like to create things. It's an upstream, upstream oil and gas valve to a, a jewelry design to anything that falls in between. You'll, be have, uh, you'll have the access to the latest technologies um, and the latest CD, C, CNC machines and la uh, laser cutters. So you can basically a playground for people who know how to invent things. So we managed to do this in a year um, and we're just getting started. Uh, as I said before, our HQ is, is soon to be uh, ready to move into as well, which is gonna tie everything together. And we are, here to support companies locally and abroad who want to really tap into such an ecosystem so we can support them to scale. Um, we have over 50 companies now and we're, we're, we're talking, targeting to double that by the end of the year. One of the latest initiatives that we had uh, was the virtual accelerator, which we launched focusing on advanced industries. The deadline is actually tomorrow evening. Uh, we launched on, the, on March 20th, and we have received over 400 applications in a very specific industry, which is something we're really proud of. And we're looking forward to supporting the companies who, who, um, who came in uh, and applied for us. Thank you. Um, I'll give the stage to Hussein to kick off. Looking forward to the session, and thank you. Thank you, Tare, and uh, thank you for Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park for the invitation. Um, I'm very glad to be with my fellow panelists as well here to participate in this event. Uh, just a quick, uh, quick background. Um, I've been in this industry for the past almost 20 years. I worked with different companies. I worked with Aramex, I worked with UPS. I worked also with, with, the, with the UAE government uh, and the, uh, the Prime Minister's office. And I just joined Fetcher recently. Uh, Fetcher is, a, is, is, is an innovative, tech-enabled logistics player. Uh, we're now operational in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. Uh, we leverage on our technology to really solve a lot of problems and to, to find innovative ways of handling packages across the world. Fetcher was an, a last mile operator, and now it's heading to become more of an end-to-end -end global player rather than handling only the small part of, of the business. I'm very excited to participate and, and share my views in this, uh, in this session. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we've got Ahmed Hafiz. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be here and join and participate in this event. Um, I actually have a few slides to present. Uh, is it okay to present them now, Tare, or is that coming in a bit later? Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. I'll stop sharing from my side. Too. Okay, okay. So let me share my screen. Okay. And tell me, guys, if you can see my slides. They're visible. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, so I, I think our uh, I'll, I'll give a quick introduction for uh, for Via and for myself. And I think uh, what we uh, like 
what we were planning to discuss here is uh, some of the challenges that we are facing in the transportation sector. So I, 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 I I'll go ahead also to speak about some of those challenges and uh, maybe we can have the discussion later. So um, uh, my name is Ahmed Hafiz. I'm the regional director of, uh, of DIA. Um, uh, based out of Dubai in the UAE. For those uh, who do not know VIA, VIA is uh, a company that uses innovative technology and approaches to improve public mobility around the world. We work with uh, public transit agencies and operators and cities uh, to provide our technology as a platform for their operations. So uh, through these partnerships, our uh, partners will be able to, um, to provide to their passengers on-demand uh, shared, shared drive. And just to explain, so just uh, this, the map that you can see here, most of these uh, deployments are uh, deployments that are run by public transit agencies, by governments uh, in uh, several parts of the world, including uh, some of the countries, as you can see, uh, in the Middle East, uh, based on our technology. And just to explain, to show you where uh, exactly does on-demand sit in the transport uh, ecosystem. So uh, I'm sharing this diagram so that you can see uh, on, on, on the left-hand side, uh, you, uh, you can see the, the most convenient or the most uh, passenger focused uh, type of transportation, which is like the private car, like ride hailing or a taxi that is focused on one or two passengers. It doesn't really care where other people are going. It's focused mainly on the passengers on board. And on the far right hand side, you can see the rigid public transport system that we all know, whether the metro or the bus or um, uh, or any type of fixed route scheduled service. This is a system that is not flexible. You have to go to, uh, to the stop. You have to go to the bus stop. You have to adapt to their uh, schedule. It does not adapt to you. And between those two extremes, there is a huge opportunity for what we call on-demand transit. And on-demand, because it's based on technology, obviously, it can adapt based on changing the parameters and the calibration. It can act more uh, convenience, to give more convenience and act somehow like ride hailing companies, or it can act more, it can be more efficient and act more like a fixed, uh, fixed route transportation. It really depends on, on the use case. However, the technology behind it, the algorithm, is basically uh, what, what it does is that it's matching people that are going on the same direction at the same time and assign them in the same vehicle in a way that is not affecting the individual rights for each, each passenger. So for example, you'll be sitting in a bus, but you feel that you are actually sitting in a taxi because it's taking you from where you are with other people who are going in your direction exactly and you're not going out of your way. So that's basically uh, on the on demand. Uh, and here I can stop sharing my screen. Sorry, let me that can you still see my screen or yes okay uh, yes i can stop sharing my screen for me. okay uh, a quick background uh, on myself i'm actually i graduated as an engineer from uh, the uh, uh, telecommunication and uh, electronics uh, faculty of engineering in ancient university in, in cairo uh, I've worked in several parts of the technologies. I've worked in telecommunication by, by nature. I worked with, with Google for five years. I worked with Honeywell. So I jumped from one uh, industry. I like to change industries and transportation has been my home for the last uh, four years. And I'm happy to be here in the event and join the discussion. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, that was a great presentation. Um, Mahmoud, would you like to? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Hadboub. I'm director of Smart Mobility at Kareem. Kareem is the leading ride hailing company in the region. Kareem serves uh, uh, the region from Pakistan all the way to North Africa. 
We have uh, one million plus uh, captains on our network. Uh, we are also in the delivery business uh, and the payment business. And recently we got into micro mobility and this is an area I focus on. So my main focus on future modes of transportation like uh, autonomy, electrification, and recently micromobility. And we just recently, beginning of this year, we launched in Dubai, our bike share scheme uh, across Dubai, which been uh, well received by uh, the public uh, to address the, you know, the short trips uh, and first and last mile um, in Dubai. Thank you. Um, so the reason I personally so that reached out to each one of you is because I'm, per let me just turn off my, turn on the video. Hello. So personally, I reached out to each one of you because I use all each, each one of, you know, Fetcher to, to Via to Karim. I'm, I'm, I'm a personal user and, and you guys have been kind of leading the transition in, in the UAE towards uh, when it comes to anything under the mobility or the transport and logistics uh, industries. Um, I'm sure we've all been bombarded over the past couple of months in terms of how has COVID impact, how has COVID impact, but from a positive perspective, I'd like to know how has it changed for you guys in terms of what you're trying to achieve and what are your insights in terms of what's coming next? Um, I think in the same way you guys spoke. So Hussein, if you'd like to start off with this, please. Yeah, I thought it, uh, I mean, COVID, uh, COVID was, was a, maybe, I mean, it, it was a negative thing on, on the whole world. However, based on industry level, uh, COVID maybe have unleashed a bit of the real strength of uh, the, the logistics players in, in the market. It was the real dif differentiator that showed every single consumer and every single retailer and e-tailer, how well we are prepared based on technology, based on capacity, and how well maybe others may have not been yet prepared. I mean, it was a very good uh, um, wake-up call for everybody that you have to be always ready and, and having the right tech, the right capacity, the right business continuity plan, the BCP, to be able not to really allow any disruption in the delivery of goods, and especially when it comes to essentials. We have seen a massive growth in the number of deliveries during COVID-19 because you know the malls closed, no more brick and mortar, everybody went online and the orders were spiking like never before. The whole industry in the country and in the region have faced big challenges because the demand was, I mean, I can tell you tens of zeros, maybe more than what, what's there in terms of capacity. And if you bring all the capacity of all the courier companies in the region, it will never be enough maybe to cover even 50% of what was there. It was incredible. So the secret for us, I mean, we were able to navigate very safely here. And as I'm always saying in different webinars, first of all, our technology helped us a lot because our technology will allow always to block schedules and capacities for certain clients based on a pre-agreed pre on plan. So we don't come to a client and tell them, give us 10,000 parcels today. We're going to deliver these within the SLA 100%. We tell them our capacity is X number. This is what we can handle for you because we have to deliver within the SLA and we don't want any customers and citizens to suffer and struggle by waiting 10 and 15 days. So we were one of the companies who were, who were able to deliver within our SLAs, of course, not on 100% mark because nobody can get you 100%, but we were on the high 90s, the performance. And we were able to also regulate our capacity and handle based on... Uh, where, which areas there were less curfews, which areas we were able to operate. So we take as much or we bite as much as we can digest, as, as I say. This was, this was really for me a very good story that I would like to tell everybody because the team was extremely resilient, extremely professional. They were the clients day and night planning and trying as much as we can to reduce the stress on the people who are sitting at home and waiting for their parcel. Because when you cannot go and to the moon and get your parcel immediately or your whatever you buy you don't need to wait for 10 to 15 days i mean in the industry i have never seen in my life a two weeks delivery window never so uh, for us it was a great lesson we tested our capabilities we tested our technology we tested ourselves 
And I think moving forward, this spike and this e-commerce boom is here to stay and to stay forever. So are we ready? I can tell you very much ready. We just need to scale up our capacity, keep on developing our technology and move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Hussain. Um, Ahmed, your insights? Sure, thank you, Tarek. Uh, thank you, Hussain, for uh, this insightful uh, uh, input. Uh, if, if I can ask uh, the, please, the participant to mute their phone so that to avoid having an echo for, for the rest of the participants. Um, uh, unfortunately, the transportation industry was not as lucky as the parcel delivery uh, industry. Uh, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's a tough place to be in working in mobility when you're asked to stay at home and not to go anywhere. So um, let me let me before before getting into how Via uh, acted in the wake of uh, COVID-19, let let me maybe just try to lay down the different challenges that we all faced and how this uh, translated into uh, transportation, so that we can understand what type of challenges we're facing and what type of trends we 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 are likely to see in the future. So. So from, from a social aspect, as, as you know, we have been asked for a long period of time to stay at home, to uh, avoid uh, social interaction, to basically avoid any close proximity to other people. Uh, this has reflected into a 90% uh, drop in public transportation all over the world. Um, some services have been closed, complete shutdown, whether because because of safety reason or because nobody is really using them. So it's, uh, it, it makes sense to, to just shut down the services. Um, as, a, as a future expectation, unfortunately, we expect that the ridership and the demand on transportation or public transportation will uh, continue uh, to, to be down. Unfortunately, the fear and anxiety that has been created uh, in the past period will not go away just by deciding that we're going back to the road. And just to give you an example, uh, the New York City uh, has reported that it took them more than three years uh, after the September 11 to return to uh, the ridership uh, levels of the metro uh, since after the attack. So, so it's, not, it's not about filing a vaccine or a treatment this status that we're seeing is, is here to stay. I totally agree with what Hussein is, is saying. This trend is probably irreversible. We're going to continue seeing this trend happening. From an economic perspective, of course, uh, we have seen jobs are being lost. Uh, the consumer discretion, the spending went down uh, heavily. Uh, from the transportation point of view, we have seen government shutting down the services to try and be cost effective. And uh, finally, from a health perspective, we, we now have the healthcare workers are became a category considered at high risk because of, uh, of, of the high chance of contracting uh, the virus. Uh, and at the same time that we, 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 we have a shutdown in public transportation, we need to provide these uh, essential workers, whether the healthcare workers or other type of frontliners, a secure and safe way for transportation. So these are basically the, the challenges that uh, we're all facing, and this is how it's, uh, it's affecting or impact, uh, this is the impact on transportation. Uh, from, from VR perspective, what we have done, being a technology company, uh, we were lucky to act fast. We have the ability to act fast. So we, we acted on two different levels. One is the immediate uh, impact, and another one is a longer term plan that we're working on it already. The immediate impact is that uh, we, we, have, we have identified, we have aligned our priority with these needs that we have seen. So the first thing that we thought of, all public transportation is closed. Nobody is, there are curfews around the streets. Who is going to support the essential workers to get to there they need to be, whether uh, nurses or doctors who need to be in hospitals or uh, food supply employees who need to be in the storage or in the areas where, where, where they work. So we introduced an idea of essential, uh, essential uh, workers uh, transportation, specialized transportation. And this is, so all over the world, we have repurposed our services 
uh, the on-demand services to mainly focus on hospitals, for example, or other essential workers. It depends on all city and what they decide to uh, to cover. And uh, uh, so, so because it's all based on technology, we don't have like fixed bus stops. We we can, it's all configurable. So we have created in a couple of days repurposed the services in Berlin, in New York, in many of the cities that we have uh, we operate to make it a, to dedicate the service for essential workers and here in in our region uh, we had an example in in abu dhabi where uh, we created uh, based on the requirement from the city of abu dhabi uh, a dedicated service for healthcare workers that is now very popular and they wanted to stay the, the Abu Dhabi, we were not operating in Abu Dhabi, so it's, it was a new place for us. And it actually took us six days to uh, map the zone, train the driver, create the app, the um, uh, brand, to do the branding, to do everything. From the time that we got the go ahead from uh, the city of Abu Dhabi, to the time that we actually launched the service, it took us uh, only six days. So that, that's, that's one thing that we have done. First, it helped our partners to keep their, their fleets moving. And it helped us also as a company to keep our operation moving. Uh, and as I said, there was a silver lining because this kind of service introduced new cities to us. So there were new cities. So the, the existing cities where we work, we have repurposed the service. But like the case in Abu Dhabi, for example, we have introduced new cities to our, to our system. The second thing that we have done, as also Hussein man, mentioned, suddenly everybody is at home. Suddenly everybody is requesting, uh, asking for deliveries. The, uh, the, 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 the large stores that used to deliver in a couple of hours, it take them four or five days to deliver. So obviously there is a huge impact on the supply uh, used for uh, goods uh, goods delivery. So what we have done also in uh, many places around the world that is that we repurpose the service so that it, it doesn't transport people, it transport people plus goods because there are no people who are requesting transportation anymore. So we have changed the service to, uh, to be used as uh, a delivery platform. And we provided, so we help our, our partners to use their, their supply, their fleet that, that have been uh, dormant in order the, to, to, to use it in a productive way. And uh, we also help our system to keep things uh, moving. Uh, one of the key uh, implementation that we have done in that regard is a partnership with the uh, World uh, Kitchen, the Central World Kitchen in New York, where we help them to deliver 150,000 meals a day. So uh, it's, it's the, the, the pandemic is a disaster by all means. However, I believe in each disaster, there are opportunities and uh, this is the time uh, actually for on-demand uh, technologies and this innovative uh, transportation technology do disrupt the technology that has been the same uh, for many years until it was first disrupted by uh, companies like Karim and Uber. And now we're trying to disrupt the public transportation industry. And this is our longer plan is that now we are having uh, longer uh, and, and deeper conversations with the cities and public transit agencies to deeply integrate on-demand transit into their transportation network. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. It's really impressive to see how everyone's uh, explanations are, are, are proving to be very customer centric on a very high level. And this is becoming further and further more developed. Uh, Mahmoud, would you like to uh, say your piece? Yeah, sure. So for Kareem, you know, from the beginning, Kareem's mission was to create a, a platform for the region to serve people's needs. And although transportation was one of the early services that Kareem got into, Kareem has a diversified portfolio of different services. And just recently, uh, we, uh, Kareem introduced a strategy for a super app for the region basically to answer people's needs 
uh, on the super app. And this is a platform for our services and uh, other partners services that could come on that platform. So yes, the COVID crisis definitely impacted, impacted us like everybody else. Um, and uh, uh, some areas uh, uh, experienced like ride hailing, um, uh, uh, you know, got impacted, but other areas like delivery and food, those areas experienced uh, uh, quite a bit of growth. And for us specifically on micromobility, we did get impacted because we have to stop our services, but now we're back on and ridership is uh, almost back to where it was before. So um, I believe uh, COVID is uh, like there is no turning back to normal. I mean, this is kind of the new normal and we have to be ready for that. Uh, COVID could be uh, something that recurs. Uh, whether COVID or something else, and we need to be ready for that. And Karim, um, you know, put a major effort into uh, into safety and contactless technologies to provide the services that uh, uh, you know our customers are asking for. So yes, it, we got impacted, but uh, we've been executing on a long-term strategy, and if anything, it only accelerated it. Thank you. Um, just we've got a few questions from the audience and, and something I'm personally very excited about to know. What is the kind of plans to integrate the whole aspect of sustainability in your operations? Um, I think, again, with the order, I think we can start off with Hussein. So, so the question was from uh, Harry Govind. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, do you think the pandemic that we are riding out at the moment could be a catalyst for us to seriously consider switching to a more sustainable modes of transport? This could be spearheaded by the existing players in the mobility and transport sectors like Fetcher and Kiri, uh, which would then have a ripple effect on the end consumers who are green as well. Definitely, uh, Tariq. I mean, it's the right time now to, to become more sustainable in the way we operate in this industry because, you know, this industry we are the biggest polluters in the world. I mean, you know, the transportation industry. So we have to be uh, more sustainable. We have to be more eco-friendly as well. We have to, to take care of the carbon emissions. And uh, the best way to do this is by going more into creative uh, delivery solutions and the omni-channel solutions, whereby maybe you don't only depend on the, the last mile leg of the delivery, you can depend more on having pick up points, drop off points, you will reduce the number of trips for collecting and delivering packages by going maybe in the future. I'm not talking about touch, I'm talking about the whole industry. When you have the locker solutions that you have in Europe, for example, when you have uh, several drop, uh, drop and, and pick up points, you will have more of a hybrid model, you will go into a hyper local model. There are a lot of ways that you can be more sustainable in this industry. And of course, I think COVID-19 is gonna push us all to accelerate and expedite this. I agree 100% with this question. Ahmed, would you like to pitch in? Sure. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely this is what, been, what we have been uh, pitching for for the last uh, few years. Um, uh, we, we are getting there, as I was saying, the COVID-19 has, give, uh, has given a push to all those uh, efforts. Um, if, if, if you think of the different uh, modes of public transportation, so if, if, you, uh, if you think of, of a bus that is uh, going back and forth, uh, whether there is a demand or not, whereas there are people who are using the service or not, you can think of this if there are uh, like hundreds of people that are being moved uh, at the same time then maybe that's that's a, a good way to, uh, to to move them however if you're talking that uh, about a case where you have uh, spread uh, demand across the city low demand across the city it doesn't really make sense it's, it's really not sustainable to have hundreds of buses just covering the city overnight and going back and forth empty most of the time because you need, as a city, you need to have a, a public transportation service available. So this is 
what the, your, your, your role as a city is to provide public transportation to the people in need. So there are people who finish their work at two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning or whatever. So they need to have the transportation way. So that's why each city deploys hundreds of buses across the city because maybe there is one person or two person will use this service, which is totally lossy. And for tens of years, maybe for since, since the transportation started with public transportation more than 50 years ago, this is a lossy operation and everybody accepted it. Nobody was thinking that let's change this. Now with the technology that we're having, technology that uh, have, have uh, disrupted the taxi industry with the existence of the ride hailing company that disrupted the car sharing uh, industry as with the rental industry with the presence of car sharing company like e-cars and others. So now we're disrupting the public transportation and we're saying you do not have to have all these buses just going around empty, carrying hot air uh, all night or all day. You can actually have smarter solution to operate this uh, this fleet, and that's definitely much more sustainable than uh, what it used to be. The the opportunity that we had due uh, because of uh, COVID nineteen is that everybody is now looking into the budget into how the money is being spent. And they are now under, everybody's under pressure to find a better way to spend the money, uh, a better way to do business. And that's definitely good for the future. Doesn't, didn't have to have a pandemic for us to, uh, to do that, but that's what happened. And hopefully we uh, get out with this to something positive. Completely agree. Thank you for that. Mahmoud? Yeah, so for us, you know, sustainability is a, is a very important aspect of the business because a sustainable fleet, a sustainable service is, is also uh, leads to a sustainable company. And if you look at our uh, fleet, um, you know, half of it on the right handling side almost is now shifted to becoming hybrid, which, which means for a hybrid car now, consumes half of the uh, amount of gas that it was consuming before. And another like aspect of that is, you know, the introduction of micromobility. Now, you know, the car is not the right answer for, like Ahmed said, for uh, every uh, trip. Uh, in, in the case of bikes that we have in Dubai, the bikes are not just for leisure. We actually are seeing a ridership moving from ride hailing into the bike. And so the, our bikes are e-bikes, electric bikes, very sustainable mode of transportation, and they do uh, satisfy people's needs. So I think this is a critical thing to, to invest in, and we are investing in, and we see that only accelerating because, like I said before, COVID is something that, you know, is not a one-time thing. and dealing with the issue of pollution uh, uh, will be critical for these kinds of things. So the more sustainable we are, environmentally sustainable, the better off we are. And we're pushing in that direction. Thank you. Um, we had two questions as well around um, the autonomous delivery. Um, maybe I can, I can pitch in a little bit over here. I guess when it comes to the autonomous delivery, there's a lot of work that has to go around especially in the collaboration between with the governments, because there's a lot of talks on infrastructure, uh, which isn't ready, readily available today. Uh, we are currently supporting a couple of our partners around drone deliveries, for example. Um, so when it comes to the next wave of disruptive tech, such as uh, autonomous deliveries, this is exactly what we're trying to foster here at the park. So please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, we have an open innovation type of culture. So we're always here to leverage our connections from private to public um, and anything in between with the academic as well. Uh, so we can support startups that wanna grow, support ventures and SMEs to, to, to really uh, tap in and scale. Um, so from a Q and A perspective, I think uh, uh, I covered this as much as I could. Uh, if there's any final points that you guys would like to 
mention too. I think we can wrap up. Tarek, I can just add to this. It's a long way, really, to, to see the full adoption of autonomous exactly. deliveries and transportation. And the regulations will have to have a lot of... Uh, you need to update the regulations. You need to, to put new regulations, which are not there now. You need to look into safety. You need to look into a lot of areas before really going and, and start having this solution as one of, of the really permanent solutions. I think it's a long way. But as long as you start testing now, even within the park's premises, it's very much worth to explore how this technology is going to evolve and disrupt the whole industry. It's a bit, it will take a bit of time, but definitely it's going to come. I mean, this is the future. And, and as we are used in the UAE, always the future is, starts in the present before it comes later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I guess uh, we can wrap up. Uh, yeah, I, I can just add a quick, a quick point uh, to that. Uh, I, I think technology is uh, uh, giving a lot of momentum to all the changes to happen much faster. If you look at uh, from transportation uh, point of view, you can see that uh, it took us like thousands of years that we've been using horses to move around uh, from one place to another. And then in the last hundred years, We've been using uh, the vehicle almost in the same way that, that we use it until recently when uh, the ride-hailing companies started to emerge, which changed the face of transportation uh, completely uh, just in few years. So you can see that changes are happening uh, in much shorter time. Autonomous, when we talk about, now we have, you can see autonomous, there are uh, autonomous on-demand vehicles that are running around. I wouldn't say it's the most efficient uh, way. Uh, it's more of a demo or piloting. Uh, we have uh, a pilot in uh, in California where we have robo taxi. So we have taxis that are operating, going up to uh, 90 kilometer per hour speed, which is one of the highest speeds in autonomous vehicles. Uh, it's not the most efficient way, but if you think a couple of years ago or three years ago, this is like science fiction. So I believe that the changes are happening and the technology is really uh, speeding up the changes to take much shorter time. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate everyone's inputs and insights. Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for all the attendees. We had quite a healthy attendance today from literally all over the world. Um, we really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. That's your idea. And hopefully we can uh, collaborate in the near future. Again, thank you for your time. Good luck with everything. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank